What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and in this video I want to show you three baits and three ways to fish lily pads. Lily pads can be a pain in the butt to fish. So I'm going to go through three baits and I'm going to talk about the techniques that I use to fish these lily pads and I'm sure by the end of this video you guys will be able to go out and catch some fish out of these things. It, they're tough, they're really tough. And I wanna talk about why. That some of them grow close together and those can be the toughest to get into. And there's ways to fish that efficiently. And then there's some that are scattered. And then when a bass bites, it can wrap you around the lily pads and it'll, and as you're pulling, it'll pull that hook up to the lily pad stem. And that lily pad stem will help dislodge the hook out of the bass's mouth. There's just so many different things to do. And I'm gonna talk about the techniques that you can get them out. Now, the first one that I want to talk about is per, well, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites, but it's one that works really, really good. And that is a frog, of course. All right, so a frog, and I'm gonna put links to, to other videos I have about all three of these baits and all three of these styles so you guys can get the most information possible. I'm gonna to try to cram as much as I can into a small amount of time, but you just never know. Plus, any of these baits and rods and reels and stuff like that, a link to the a Tackle Warehouse affiliate link will be down in the description for you guys to go check it out. And I get a little bit of cut if you buy something, but anyway, hollow body frog. Uh, this is a Spro Bronze Eye Frog, uh, brown, I get brown with a black belly. I don't really ever pay attention what colors they are, but um, always a good choice. Always a really good choice. And real quick, I want to talk about the rod and the reel. A heavy power rod. I like a short one. This is a 6.5. They don't make them anymore. A uh, 6.8 would be good. 7 foot, 7 foot 2, seven, you know, but a 7 foot 6 for me is just hard for me to walk a frog and hard for me to really work it and i don't like a really really long rod so the longest one i use is seven three um braid 65 pound braid this is smack smackdown braid i like it because it's smooth it doesn't make a whole lot of noise when it's being rubbed across the lily pads then the frogs i have two different types of frogs but both of them have a pointed nose as you can see right there you want one that has a pointed nose um, I use the Spro Bronze Eye Frog. I use the 13 Fishing Trash Panda. Um, as a matter of fact, I got one down here. It's a little dirty because I used the snot out of it, but same sort of deal. Pointed nose. This one comes through a little bit better than this one. This one, I don't know if it snags on the eyes or what, but it's just, this, the, the, uh, the Trash Panda comes through just a little bit better, but you really, the bass don't pay any attention to that anyway. So, 65 pound braid, Spro Bronze Eye Frog, 13 Fishing Trash Panda. Now, how am I going to fish it? How to fish it. Now, sometimes you get those lily pads that have like, um, I know they get down in Florida. They have the, the flowers that are up and the, and the seed pods that are up off the water. And sometimes um, you get the, the spatter, docked, spatter docked lily pads where the, pad, where the leaves themselves are up off the water. And you really got to be careful about how you cast. Um, what I call it is I, I, I call it a laser cast is what I call it for a lack of a better term. But you throw it fast and hard and low and you just straight in and then stop it before it, it, you know, before it starts to slow down. And then you work it back and that'll keep the wind from catching it and getting wrapped around things and stuff like that. That's the that's a cast I would use for that one. And then other times you get the ones like the ones that are out in front of me. They're just flat on the bottom. There's nothing up in the air. And then you just cast and cover water and it's a lot more efficient. Um, but anyway, let's get up. I'm going to slip right out here under these lily pads and I'm going to show you guys the three or four different ways to work a frog, um, through these pads. And I'm going to kind of get a little bit more detailed into that. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for the lighting. I'm going to try to make, keep it as best as I can with this high bluebird sky. But anyway, so the frog, it's pretty simple. you it's a top water frog. It's going to stay on the top, but I want to talk about a few things about walking it and about cadence and about the, the, the hook set and that, those, kind of a, those kind of details. So you're gonna cast it out. Now to walk the frog, think of it as a tap, tap, tap. You're tapping a drum. You don't wanna tap the drum and leave the drumstick on the drum. You're gonna tap and you're gonna throw, you know, bring your drumstick right back off the drum. Same thing with this. You're gonna go tap and you're gonna throw you're going to tap it and you're going to throw the line back at the frog and it's short little taps. And you're working it through. And I like to do some, you know, pop, pop, pop and pause and pop and pause and just kind of play around with the pauses and stuff like that. 
Um, most of the time, I'm not one to go burning it through the pads. Um, I might do that just to check and see if I can get a blow up and maybe, you know, fish miss it. But I'll do that with like a, a horny toad or something like that. But typically, I don't. Typically, all I do is just a little bit of tap and pause and that kind of stuff. And that's one way I'm going to do it. All right, so the second way that I like to to work it is kind of just a drag and stop and i do this a lot around mats you know matted vegetation stuff like that but lily pads it works really really good and the goal is not to give a whole lot of, of fast movement you're just kind of working along through the lily pads just real slow if you look at my hand see how slow i'm moving it and I'm working it through these pads and when i do this i typically am using a frog that's really natural looking black or brown or like a green pumpkin color or a natural frog color. And then I'm just gonna work it through and then just kind of work my way around. All right, so when you get bit, um, the biggest thing is you've gotta give them the bait, okay? And so you're instantly gonna wanna set the hook, especially if you don't have a whole lot of experience with top water and that kind of stuff. But you've gotta let them get it down, turn their head, and you've gotta you know, get them a chance to close their mouth. Because a lot of times they'll get up there and they'll grab it and they'll have a mouthful of junk along with their frog and it just takes a second. And so I got to the habit, instead of just counting one, one thousand, two, one thousand, you know, I found it easier for me that when I get bit, I go, I'm going to set the whoop and I set the hook, you know. And so it gives me a, that little bit of time and I rarely ever miss fish doing that. And if you just bow to them and give it to them. Another technique is if you're standing up and fishing, fish with your rod out of position to set the hook. I fish with my rod low and to the right, and I like to set my hook up and over my head. And so that gives me another, another split second. But say I get bit and I go, I'm going to set the When you set the hook, seriously, put your man pants on and set the hook. It's, it's hard, really, really hard. That's why those hooks are so big. That's why you're fishing 65 brand, pound braid. You're going to get, you're going to catch big ones doing this. You're going to want to get them turned around and out of the pads. A lot of times they're going to wrap you up and you've got to go get them, but that's part of the fun of it. You know, the, the, the combat and stuff like that, but that's fishing a frog. I'm going to leave links to videos about modifications of frogs and that kind of stuff down uh, up here in the cards. Um, I'll also try to remember to put them down in the description. I don't typically remember that, but so one of y'all remind me if I forget to do that. All right, so there were, there's about three or four others I wanted to show you, um, but the best one I think is probably my favorite and believe it or not, I don't have the right rod and reel on the boat to rig it up, but I do want to talk about it. It's the floating worm, okay? And when I say floating worm, you don't have to look on the package looking for a floating worm. Um, basically, it's a straight tail worm. Whether, it's got, whether it sinks or not with the hook weight, it really doesn't make any difference. But the technique, everybody calls it a floating worm. All right, so you take a trick worm. Um, you take a number, uh, I mean a four-aught size uh, Gamagatsu offset worm hook, about an 18-inch leader, and a swivel, and I'll show you the size swivel I'm talking about, if I have them. No, because I was not planning on fishing Carolina rigs, so I took that one out, and that's where I keep my Carolina rig stuff. It's just a big swivel, okay? And the reason I'm telling you about this, and I don't have the stuff, is I really think this, this bait's important. Because when the fish are really, really funky and finicky, this is a perfect bait to get in there and work really carefully around the pads. Now, here's the trick. I'm using 40 or 50 pound braid. Um, and then I'm using a, a, the swivel and then I'm tying an 18 to 20 inch, uh, 15, 17 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I want that leader to be fluorocarbon so it'll sink down into the water a little bit and just helps it to have a better action. The, the rod I'm using is a medium or a medium heavy moderate. Um, just kind of a weird kind of deal, uh, but a medium is probably best. Medium fast action is probably the best one. Um, and I'm just throwing it out across and I'm working it through those pads real slowly, just kind of jerking and reeling and jerking and reeling. You know, I, what's funny is the other baits I wanted to show you I've got. This one I don't, but I really think it's important because it catches so many fish in pads and I'll have one on there when I come back. But um, so you just jerk, jerk, pause, and you're working it around and you're just kind of meandering through the lily pads while you're jerking it. 
All right, so let's go over that again since I don't have it to show you, okay? It is a Gamagatsu offset round bin in a 4 aught size 4 aught um, It is a, an 18 inch, 18 to 20 inch fluorocarbon leader, 17 to, eight to 15 pound. Uh, big swivel. It doesn't really, size really doesn't matter on this one. Just a big, heavy, you know, heavy duty swivel. 40 pound test braid on a medium fast action rod. Seven three to one or eight uh, seven one or seven six to one or eight three to one gear ratio reel somewhere in the seven and eight um, and that's it and just go out and go fishing and like I said work it through so uh, maybe I'll do a video on that when I come back from uh, I got to go home here from Louisiana and I'll come back and I'll do a video on that floating worm through the through the uh, the pads but anyway all right so the next one is going to be a swim jig. Gosh almighty. <laughs> Now a swim jig, I'm sorry, I got fish schooling right out in, the, in these lily pads. I'm trying to finish this so I can get out there and catch them. Ah. All right, so a swim jig. This is uh, one of those that when I want to cover a lot of water and I've got scattered lily pads, in other words, I can work it my way in and out and through and around these lily pads, um, I'm going to throw a swim jig, bar none. Um, it's just a really, really good good rig to come in and out and through and around the the cover plus most of them if you buy one like this is a six cent swim jig uh it's got a big beefy hook i can fish it on braided line this is 50 pound braid same thing smack down as the frog um i like to keep it compact so i use a rage uh, menace as a trailer or any kind of little white craw bait or a craw bait that'll match the swim jig black and blue white are the two colors that i throw and you just you know, just throw it out there and work it through. Now, the rod that I like to use is I don't like to use a heavy power rod. I still use braided line, but I like to use a medium heavy. It makes it easier to cast. Hold on, I'm spinning around. Let me stick my paddle down in the mud so you guys don't get bright light behind you and mess up my, my shot. But anyway, I like to use a medium heavy. This is a seven foot three or seven foot six medium heavy. Um, it, it, it loads up well. It's still got enough flex to be able to do it. And you really can just absolutely uh, cover an area really fast if you're searching for fish. And if they're on it, just keep it in your hand. It's like fishing a chatterbait <laughs> that doesn't do very well in the in the uh, in lily pads. Uh, but it so it's it's really really efficient and really does um, does work. And uh, I can't think of anything else to say about it. A high speed reel is a must. Eight eight three to one gear ratio reel. Um, and let's get out of the water. <laughs> That's all there is. Let's just get out of the water and catch some of these suckers. All right, so a swim jig. It's a little difficult to throw a swim jig when you have lily pads that are, o the leaves are overlapping each other. I understand that. But um, you can do it in a swim jig, with a swim jig, if they're just kind of touching each other, like these that are right here next to me. See these, how they're just kind of, they're kind of touching each other and you got a little bit of a, uh, I don't know what that weed is in between it. I, I knew it about 20 minutes ago and forgot. But uh, um, you can definitely do it with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this sucker. And this is, you want to get the bait underwater, of course. I've got a half ounce swim jig on. It's a six cent swim jig. This one and the Picasso swim jig come, come through grass really, really good. And I'm shaking it and working it through. And as I get to where I can't get it through, I just kind of pop it on the slack line. Again, I'm using braid, swimming it through. And let me see if I can show you what I'm doing with my rod. I want that bait not to swim straight. I want it to go, I want it to hop up and down and have kind of an erratic action. I want it to hit lily to pad stems. I want it to work its way through that kind of stuff. And a lot of times you've got to give it, you know, you've got to work it in amongst the, the outer edges of the of the little pads of, of lily pads. You know, just kind of working it through. And then I like to hold it off to the side and do this, which is good and bad. It puts me out of position to set a hook, but it really does work through that grass really, or roll through those lily pads really, really good. And I'm just kind of working it through. Now, same sort of deal. When you feel a bite, give it to them for a second and then set the hook. Now, um, if they do wrap you up, uh, especially with with the, the swim jig and with the worm, if they do wrap you up, give it to them a little bit. Don't try to drag them into a lily pad. Hold the line tight, 
let them fight themselves out and just kind of sit there and just go, okay, wait for them to start to slow down a little bit and then try to bring them up and bring them around that lily pad or you can go get them. But the biggest mistake that I make a lot of times is I want to muscle them out. And it, like I said, it, it, you have your, you know, the lily pad stem, your line gets wrapped around that lily pad stem, pulls all the way up, gets into that crotch of that hook, and then it helps that fish gain leverage and pop off and you'll lose a ton of fish that way. You still will lose fish in lily pads, but this is a dynamite way, or these are three dynamite ways to catch them. Another one is punching. I'll leave that link down in the description, but I just wanted to do three baits on this one. Uh, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go ahead and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.